హలో ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ యాజ్ ప్రామిస్డ్ టుడే విల్ బి డిస్కసింగ్ ఫ్యూ క్వశ్చన్స్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ క్వశ్చన్స్ ఫ్రమ్ ది ఏజ్ ఆఫ్ చాసర్ and uh, we will have this uh, every day this questioning sessions from uh 9 o'clock every day we will have it from 9 o'clock and uh, we can you know uh, discuss these sessions every day from 9 o'clock and uh, uh, there are a few questions i have prepared for uh today's session which i feel very i feel they are important for the age of chaucer and uh, uh, yeah i'm i'm ready to discuss you can uh, type in your answers and i'm sure uh, these questions will be helpful for all of us and uh, we can you know uh, together learn and uh, learn to le- to re uh, learn so yeah let us i'm just uh, uh, going through the you know the technicalities let me just fix it up and uh, let me just see fix it up and uh, let me just see fix it up and uh, let me just see fix it up and uh, let me just see fix it up and uh, i hope uh, uh you all can type your answers if uh, kindly type it and so, so 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 that let us check that you can type in the box uh, anything you can type hi hello and just see if you all can type and we can see it in the comment section uh, in the chat section uh, so that we start with our session because this is an interactive session i need to see in the chat box uh whether uh typing is being followed or not uh, you all can do it or not like i am typing it can you all do that are you able to type can you just please uh, type something so that no no you have not joined late sorry uh, yeah we can see uh, the typing matters here I, actually today i was facing some issues and that's why uh, uh this problem so uh, let us ch- start with few questions which i find uh, important from the age of chaucer and his contemporaries and you all can type in the chat box uh, to see if you all are aware of it if not uh, i'll try to answer the questions uh, this is a very common question for example who is called the father of english poetry i think you all are aware of it uh, the father of english poetry i think you all are aware of this answer uh thank you uh, so we start with the first question the father of uh, who is called the father of english poetry father of english poetry you all can type in the chat box right 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 it's chaucer we go to the next question uh, which poet was the first poet of national importance which poet was the first poet of national importance for the first time the concept of national poet came into vogue uh, yes uh, rocky it's chaucer thank you now this is an interesting question uh, in 1367 okay in the year 1367 uh, chaucer was granted a uh, you know life pension for his services in 1367 chaucer was granted the uh, sum of life pension sum for his services can you name the king who granted this pension are you all aware of the name of the king who granted this pension for chaucer uh, we all know the chaucer has uh, chaucer's tenure lifetime was under three kings so in 19 in 1367 chaucer was given a uh, life pension 
uh, I want to know. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not James one. It's not James one. I want to know who is the king who gave him this uh, pension. Name of the king who gave him this pension. Any answers? No, not King Richard II. It's uh, King Edward III. King Edward III granted him in this pension in 1367. Okay, let us now uh, move ahead to the next question. Uh, Chaucer has written uh, many dream allegories. We are all aware of it, right? Chaucer has written many dream allegories. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me how many in particular? Are you, are you sure how many dream allegories did Chaucer write? Are you aware of it? If yes, you can give the answer. And uh, it would be great if you can name. Good, Pinky. Three. Can you name the three, uh, three dream allegories? The three dream allegories by Chaucer. Very famous. Very famous three dream allegories by Chaucer. Uh, no, Alia, it's three. It's three, three dream allegories by Chaucer. Very famous works. Uh, let me just answer that. One is the Book of Duchess. The other is the House of Fame, right? Rocky Roy, House of Fame. And the third is the Parliament of Fowls. Now let us go to the next question. Who translated Romance of the Rose? Uh, which is a French work originally, into English. Who translated it? Uh, the Romance of the Rose. Who translated the Romance of the Rose? Uh, a French work into English. I want to know who translated it. Who translated it? Yeah, okay. We have finished that. One is uh, House of uh, Fame, the Book of Duchess, and Parliament of Fowls. Those are three three uh, dream allegories by Chaucer. Uh, the next question is, who translated Romance of the Rose from French to English? Who translated it? <coughs> no, it's not Chaucer. It's not Chaucer. <laughs> uh, we are talking about Chaucer and his contemporaries, this particular uh, uh, day to day. No, Pink, it's not Chaucer. Who translated Romance of the Rose, a French work, into English? Uh, is it Chaucer? Are you all sure it is Chaucer? As per my understanding, it's Langland. Langland translated it. But of course, I might be wrong sometimes. So please do make me right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Uh, see your Chaucer. Okay, so I'll, I'll take this question, but as per my understanding, uh, the Romance of the Rose, a French work into English. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I'm wrong somewhere. Yeah, I think, I think, I think I, I mixed it up with somebody else. I think I'll, I'll cross check it, but I'll take it. Uh, I think uh, it's Chaucer. I'll, I'll just see. The, but the question was from French to English. The question was who translated it from French to English, okay? Uh, now the very uh, common question, uh, who is called the morning star of Renaissance? The morning star of Renaissance. Who is the morning star of Renaissance? Morning star of Renaissance. Morning star of Renaissance, Chaucer. Chaucer, Chaucer, Morning Star of Renaissance. Morning Star of Renaissance. Y'all are damn sure about Chaucer. Y'all are damn sure about Chaucer. However, I would like to differ. Morning Star of Renaissance. Johnson. We are doing Age of Chaucer, Chaucer and Contemporaries. Morning Star of Renaissance. Anyone else? Morning Star of Renaissance. The question is, who is who is known as the Morning Star of Renaissance? 
who is called the morning star of renaissance no you don't have to be sorry come on we are here to learn and relearn and unlearn this is just a fun uh, series you know please don't be so formal morning star of renaissance morning star of renaissance yeah it's a very common question morning star of renaissance is chaucer Geoffrey Chaucer is called the morning star of Renaissance. Morning star of Renaissance is Chaucer. There are two, morning star of Renaissance, morning star of Reformation. Two very uh, common questions. Morning star of Renaissance is Chaucer. Now the next question. This is an interesting question. We all know about Chaucer's Canterbury Tales and we know the first tale is the Knight's Tale. Okay, that we all know. Uh, now, I have an interesting question uh, from the Knight's Tale, okay? So, the Knight's Tale, we all know, is the first tale of uh, Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, okay? Now, the question is, this Knight's Tale is taken from one of the very unheard works of Boccaccio. Boccaccio is one of the works... <laughs> from which the Knight's Tale is taken, which is in Canterbury Tales. Can you tell me the work of, of that Boccaccio's tale? Which work of Boccaccio inspired or which work of Bo Bo Boccaccio from which the Knight's Tale of Canterbury Tales is taken? Can you tell the name of Boccaccio's work? The name is Tessida, T E S E I D A, Tessida, Boccaccio's Tessida. No, not Decameron, Boccaccio's Tessida, T E S E I D A, Tessida. Now we go to the next question. Uh, this question is also related to Boccaccio's Tessida. Okay. Now, Boccaccio's Tessida is a story which is retold by Shakespeare in one of his works. Boccaccio's Tessida is retold by Shakespeare in one of his works. Can you name the work of, of, of that? Yes. So Tessida, from Boccaccio's Tessida, Canterbury Tales, the Knight's Tale is taken. Now, the second question is, Boccaccio's Tessida is a story from which, is a story which is retold by Shakespeare in one of his works. Can you tell me the name of that work which is retold by Shakespeare? Boccaccio's Tessida is retold by Shakespeare in one of his works. The name of the work is Two Noble Kinsmen. Two Noble Kinsmen. Now, another interesting question. Longest, which is the longest complete poem by Chaucer. Longest complete poem by Chaucer. Can you tell me the longest complete poem by Chaucer? Longest complete poem by Chaucer. Can you tell me the poem's name? No, it's not Parliament of Fools. Ne Neha Mishra has said, right? Yes, it's Troilus and Cressida. Now, can we can can you tell me Troilus and Troilus and Cressida is written in what form? Is it blank verse? Is it Miltonic blank verse or something else? Can you tell me the form in which uh, Troilus and Cressida is written? Dream allegory, fine. But I, I want to I want to know the form. Yeah, it's rhyme royal, rhyme royal. Good, 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 great. So y'all y'all are uh, y'all y'all know so much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, who introduced the next question is who introduced heroic couplet in English? Who is the writer who introduced heroic couplet in English? Can you tell me the name of the writer who introduced heroic couplet in English? The writer who introduced heroic couplet in English. 
Any idea? The writer who introduced heroic couplet in English. You all can ask your friends to join and we can have fun every day in the evening. For, not evening, after dinner time, 9 o'clock. I'm planning to have these, uh, uh, not quizzes, these discussions for the next few few days. So you all can ask your friends to join us and we can all have together, we can, we can enjoy together. So the question is, who introduced heroic couplet in English? Can you tell me who is the writer who introduced heroic couplet in English? Come on. Obviously, Chaucer. <laughs> Rocky Roy. Obviously. I, I, I like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, I'm, see, I'm an amateur. So I'm trying to put forward few questions, uh, which I feel are very important. I know some of them might sound very easy for you all. You all are uh, today's modern students with a lot of knowledge and hard work and dedication. I know, I know. Yes, it's absolutely Jeffrey Chaucer. We can move on to the next question. Can you tell me the first poem of Chaucer? The name of the first poem by Chaucer? Name of the first poem by Chaucer? <clears throat> Which is the first poem by Chaucer? So we can remember this poem with, uh, uh, with, uh, with a tagline called ABC. Okay, ABC. So uh, the name of the poem is A Prayer to Virgin ABC. Okay, this is the first poem by Chaucer, A Prayer to Virgin ABC, first poem by Chaucer. Now the next question is, this is, this is an interesting question as per my understanding. And the question is, uh, the, the, the question is, yeah, Neha Mishra, Historia Regum Britannia was his first translation. Thank you for sharing the information. You all also can share the information so that we can all learn together. You know, if you can add something to my question, which can be helpful to all of us, that's great. Uh, because these comments will be there in the YouTube uh, video underneath uh, this video. So somebody else also can can later uh, relearn it. Ultimately, our purpose is to learn together and progress together. So we can help each other. It, 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 it is great concept, you know, if you believe in group study and helping each other, it helps you a lot. So, yeah. Uh, now, this question I find is interesting and uh, you would like to listen to this question. The question is, in, in, in Canterbury Tales, you know, in Canterbury Tales, who tells the story of January and May? Who tells the story of January and May in the Canterbury Tales? Who is that, uh, uh, that character who tells this story? Can you tell me the name of the character who tells this story? Who is this? Who is the name? Of, uh, like, who is the character who tells this story? Uh, the story of January and May. Squire. I'm sorry. It's not Squire. It's not Squire. Merchant. Yes, Muskan. It's Merchant. No, Alia, it's not Nan's Priest Tale. Sorry. It's the merchant. Thank you. We go to the next question. This is also an interesting question. I feel. Please, you please give your feedback. Okay. If you all are liking these, if you feel these are interesting questions, please write in the comment section that these are interesting questions. You all are finding it uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, the next question is Nel plus. K-N-E-L P-H-U-S. Nel plus. Nel plus. Okay. Nel plus. K-N-E-L-P-H-U-S, Nelfas, who is the noble king of Mercia, you know. Nelfas, the noble king of Mercia, has been referred in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. We all, I think, we are, we have an idea. Can you tell me the name of the tale in which, the name of the tale in the Canterbury Tales in which Nelfas, K-E-N-E-L-P-H-U-S, Nelfas, you know, the noble king of Mercia is referred. Can you tell me the name of the tale? The name of the tale in which Nelfas, the noble king of Mercia, has been referred to in Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales. Nelfas. 
which tale was it referred to? see canterbury tales is like uh, uh, canterbury tales is like a abscess you know there can be thousands of questions and we will look into few uh, but I found this question very interesting. <laughs> I found this name quite interesting. And this has not been asked anywhere in the exam so far, in any form of exam. So uh, you never know. <laughs> so I thought of asking this. I hope this, this, this question is an interesting one. Some of the interesting questions, if you feel that these questions are interesting, new questions, and new in the sense that it's, it's not that much heard of, please do write in the comment section. So Nelfus, uh, the, the uh, you know the noble king of Mercia, yes, Rocky Roy, it's the nun, nun's priest tale, nun's priest tale. Now let us move from Canterbury Tales to Chaucer's another work, okay? And this work, you will tell me the name of the work. I'll just give you a idea. This is not Canterbury Tales. This is another work by Chaucer. And in this work, we find a love story, okay? But the love story is told with a delicacy of psychological awareness. There is a delicacy of psychological awareness. There is a delicacy of psychological awareness in this particular work of Chaucer. Can you tell me the name of this work? The name of this work by Chaucer where there is this concept of psychological awareness. Anilida and Archite, no. I'm not, I'm, I'm just asking you the name of the book by Chaucer. The name of the book by Chaucer. You have this psychological, you know, taste of the psychological awareness. In which book of Chaucer? Please ask your friends also to join us. The more we are, the more interesting it will become, the more answers we will get, and the more we will enjoy. So the name of the book is The Book of the Duchess. So if you explore the book of the Duchess, you will find the psychological awareness. Book of the Duchess. Now let us move to the next work. Uh, Trilers, uh, sorry, in in again again to Canterbury Tales. Let us come back. And uh, this particular tale in the Canterbury Tales by Chaucer is a very very superb satire. Now superb satire on what? Superb satire on human marital relationships. This particular tale in Canterbury Tales is a superb satire on human marital relationships. Can you tell me the name of that tale? Oh, uh, no, Wife of Bath. <laughs> I expected this. It's not Wife of Bath. It's not Wife of Bath. That's what makes this question interesting. And do you want me to repeat? I think you got the question, right? Tell me the name of the tale from the Canterbury Tales in which there is a superb satire on human marital relationships. Rocky Roy, this time you are you couldn't do it. This time it's not Reef Tale, but yes, Pinky has done it. Pinky is right. It's Nun's Priest Tale. Well done, Pinky. We all know Chaucer lived during the time, during the period of three rulers, right? Can you tell me the name of the rulers chronologically? Can you tell me the name of the rulers chronologically? You are most welcome, Pinky. Please do participate. Please ask your friends to participate in these quizzes. Uh, my, que ne ne my next question is Chaucer, Chaucer's tenure from uh, 1340 to 1400 approx. Uh, was under three kings. Can you tell me the name of the three kings chronologically? Name of the three kings. John, Edward and William. 
I'm sorry. Half is right, half is wrong. Edward three, Richard two, Henry four. Yes, Neha is right. Congratulations, you're absolutely right. So you get a virtual chocolate from my side, Neha. You're right. Now the next question is, since Chaucer's Canterbury Tales is incomplete without the wife of Bath story, so can you tell me the real name of wife of Bath? The real name of wife of Bath. Can you tell me the real name of wife of Bath? Uh, sort of, yes. It's Alison. Right, you are right. So Rocky Roy gets a virtual chocolate from my side, Rocky Roy. Good name, I like it, Rocky Roy. Are you really Rocky Roy? <laughs> or do, is this your YouTube name? Uh, choice is yours. You, If you want to say, it's okay. If you don't want to say, no problem, sir. Uh, the next question. The next question is, Another interesting question as per my understanding. Okay. From Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. There is a character, the shipman. Okay. There is a character called shipman. We all know from Canterbury Tales. Okay. Shipman is a character. Now, can you tell me the name of the ship of that shipman? The name of the ship. What is the name of the ship of which the shipman, the, the character is associated? What's the name of the, uh, the ship? It's an interesting name. I like that name. And that's why I thought of uh, taking this question. What's the name of the ship? Can you tell me the name of the ship? From the Canterbury Tales, where the shipman is associated with. Name of the ship. I like the name and I thought of putting it across to you all. The name of the ship is Magdalene. 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 M-A-G-D-A-L-E-N. Magdalene. M-A-G-D-A-L-E-N. Not at all. No issues, Neha Mishra. I to sometimes forget who is the you know morning star of reformation. Once I went for an exam and it took me around an hour, you know, to recapitulate who is the morning star of reformation. Because there were so many things, so much inside the head. So sometimes it happens, you know. And uh, there are so many, uh, you know, uh, interesting stories I'll share with you all. <laughs> Uh, I've, it's it's so interesting. So such easy questions you forget. That is human being. We are human being. We are not machines as of now till date. But artificial intelligence is playing a very important role. Let us see. The next question. I think you all are enjoying it. I can continue three more, three, four, five questions more. What do you think? It's already ten. We started late today. What's the way to remember it rightly? Mm. It differs, I think. It differs from person to person. Your style of remembering and my style of remembering might be different. Mm, sometimes for me, for example, the names interest me. For example, this shipman's Magdalene. I think uh, uh, Magdalene is something which attracted me. So I think I will not forget. Something which I like, I don't forget. Something which I hate, I don't forget. So that is the way of remembering. Uh, I always get confused with uh, Canterbury Tales uh, a lot many times. And Shakespeare as, as, as well. And uh, yeah, recalling the dates is something. It's problem problematic. I, I also follow the same. I, I, I agree with what you say. Mm. head going blank is something which is common if the head is going blank that means you are a normal human being but believe me I have seen in my life uh, many colleagues of mine when we were students uh, they were robots they never forget dates 
I know two, three students, two, three friends of mine, they never forget dates. And sometimes I got confused that whether I am rightly produced, like I am, I, my birth, whether it is rightly done, whether I am okay or whether they are okay. Because I continuously forgot and they always remembered. So, <laughs> that's the beauty, you know. So, I am sure if you forget some things like the dates, you remember many things which others don't. So, your strength is somebody's weakness and somebody's weakness is your strength. Ah, that's why tabula rasa can take place to take new knowledge. Oh, tabula rasa. Let us, let us. Uh, try this fun way of discussing and after dinner having some discussions and and revising things because you all are very smart people. See, you know most of the answers. You all are exam ready, come on type people. I have exam nikla, you go, you give. Ham look the So, um, yeah. But you all are smart. You all are prepared. I'm very happy to see. I'm very happy that you all are doing well. You just, you know, some of you all are very well prepared and it's good. And that is why these uh, sessions can be helpful, you know, to re for recapitulation, for discussion, for brainstorming. Uh, yeah, so let us go to, I think you all are enjoying this session. Few more questions and then we stop, okay, for the day. And tomorrow again, I'll come back at 9 o'clock. In Canterbury Tales, there is a character. And that character is compared to Robin Hood. There is a character in Canterbury Tales who is compared to Robin Hood. Can you tell me the name of the character? Name of the character who is compared to Robin Hood in Canterbury Tales. Squire? No. Not Squire. Sorry, Monica. Not Squire. Robin Hood had what qualities? Just recapitulate. The monk? No. Is this question interesting? I think some of the questions of this session is interesting. Y'all are enjoying it. Y'all are still there. Y'all are still watching me. <laughs> for the last half an hour. It's great. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, my question, I'll just repeat the question that uh, name the character who is compared to Robin Hood. There you go, Rocky Roy. Rocky Roy is a good name, very modern name, Rocky. I, I like your name. I, I saw you said that it's your real name. So I, I like that name, Rocky Roy. Very modern kind of. Uh, Neha ji, nahi. Nahi Neha ji. <laughs> <laughs> this time you will not get the virtual chocolate. This time Rocky Roy will get the virtual chocolate. Uh, the name of the character is uh, the Yeoman. The Yeoman. He is compared to uh, the Robin Hood. Yes. And that's why I asked. Robin Hood, Robin Hood uh, was like what? When, you, when Robin Hood, the character comes, what comes to your mind? Uh, Rocky Roy says, because he looks like Robin Hood. You all can give your, you know, uh, you all can give your inputs, okay? Uh, if you want to add something to my question, most welcome. Okay? I'm always ready to learn. Now, uh, please tell me the real name of the miller. Real name of the miller. Like the real name of wife of Bath was Alice. What's the real name of the miller from the Canterbury Tales? Real name of the miller. Real name of the miller. No? Real name of the miller. Oh, see? Lightning. Real name of the mirror. Uh, sorry, real name of the miller. Can't recall. Yeah, it's, it's general. It's, it's not at all something which is out of the sorts. Um, real name of the miller is Robin, R-O-B-Y-N, Robin. 
Now, with the real name, I have one more interesting question. What's the real name of the cook? Real name of the cook. Real name of the cook. Can you tell me the real name of the cook? Yes. No. Yes. The real name of the cook. Real name of the cook is Roger. Real name of the cook is Roger. Okay. And if you find any any question uh, interesting, you write it down. Okay. Write it down. You have a diary. Write it down. These questions might be very helpful for some of your exams. If you find any of my question, that will be a value addition to to your understanding. Already under you know thing. You please. Uh, Mm, you know read uh, please uh, write it down in the uh, in the in the diary that you prepare so from tomorrow if you don't have a diary today you can uh, <coughs> uh, sorry uh, you can um, write it in the diary okay fine uh, real name of the cook Roger of Fair. yeah Roger right Right, right. Rocky Roy is it? Rocky Roy is very well prepared. Rocky Roy, good, good to see, good to have you. Thank you so much. Now the last two questions. Now when you talk of Canterbury Tales, you have to talk of Halle Berry, okay? Harry Belly. Now the host. In which tale do we know that Halle, uh, Harry Belly is the host? There's a tale which reveals that he is the host. Can you tell me the name of the tale which reveals that he is the host? Can you tell me the name of the tale in which it is revealed to us that Harry Belly is the host? No. The answer is prologue to the cook's tale. Prologue to the cook's tale. Pinky, what is the topic for tomorrow's quiz? Uh, I'll go chronologically. So what would be the topic? Today I was talking about Chaucer and contemporaries. Okay. So the, uh, after Chaucer and contemporaries, who will come? You can take the early tutor. The early tutor age. The early tutor has age has some potential questions, and of course, uh, we can also have few questions on William Shakespeare. But yes, I'll give a whole whole session on Shakespeare as well. Yes, of course, Shakespeare I will do. Tomorrow some part, and day after tomorrow exclusively Shakespeare. But I tell you, these topics are abscesses, cannot be covered by anybody. So I will only choose those questions which I feel are new, which I feel are interesting and which I feel are important. So there will be few reputation, reputations which I feel um, are important. There will be few new questions and there will be few interesting questions. I will generally try to avoid questions which have been asked already in any competitive examination. So by any I mean set, net, PSC, okay. But the writer of course is important. So we will uh, follow the writers, yeah. So uh, Harry Belly's name comes first for the first time. We know about, about the fact that Harry Belly is the, Harry Belly is the host in the prologue to the cook's tale. Prologue to the cook's tale. And here we come to the end, the last question of the day. And the last question of the day was, a uh, day is, who was the first poet laureate of Scotland? First poet laureate of Scotland. Can you tell me the first Poet Laureate of Scotland, please. Very famous name. First Poet Laureate of Scotland.
first poet laureate of Scotland. First poet laureate of Scotland. There are few more questions of this topic I will deal tomorrow. Few more questions. So we end today with the first poet laureate of Scotland. That is the question. Name the first poet laureate of Scotland. And the answer is William Dunbar. William Dunbar. That's the answer of that's the answer to the question. First poet laureate of Scotland. And with that, we come to the conclusion of today's quiz. Please do give your feedback in the comment section, whether you liked it or not. Please share your experience. And please, please, please ensure that you share more with your friends. And I'm sure you will spread the word. And from tomorrow, more participants will join us. And we will enjoy this post-dinner lunch. Yes, yeah, Scottish Chaucerian. Right, Rocky Rai. Uh, so we will enjoy this session. I think you all have enjoyed it today. Thank you so much. Please share your experience. How was it? Did you find few questions which are interesting and new? Did you find few questions which might be asked in the forthcoming examinations? Please share your views on that. And it was lovely to have you all for this first ever session, live session of mine on British Literature Quiz. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Please do take care. Namaskar. Take very good care. Good night.